So this past weekend, I picked up an Oculus Quest 2. I mainly got it because I thought it'd be a really fun um, thing that I can do on stream that would keep viewers engaged. I personally really enjoyed VR the few times that I've done it myself, and I thought it would be a really awesome way to bring some excitement and some new things to my stream. So the main reason I chose the Quest 2 is that its value is basically unmatched at um, $300 US for the 64 gig version, which is insane. And the fact that you can play this completely wireless. You can play both the games that are on the Oculus itself, because it's basically its own little console, as well as playing PC VR games, which is my main uh, focus. Um, entirely wirelessly from the headset. Now, version 28 of the Oculus software is coming out soon, which allows you to use something called AirLink, which is Oculus's version of wirelessly streaming your PC games to your Oculus Quest. But I don't have that one yet, and I have been using Virtual Desktop. Now, I still think that after AirLink comes out, Virtual Desktop is still gonna be very viable. As far as I'm aware, AirLink is gonna be stuck at the 90 hertz maximum refresh rate. But with version 28, they're upping the Oculus Quest 2 refresh rate to 120 hertz, which Virtual Desktop uh, has mentioned they're going to take advantage of. Now, in the past, getting Virtual Desktop on the Oculus Quest 2 and get it working it with your computer was a little bit more difficult but as of uh, a few months ago it became much more easy there's no more side loading through side quest it's very straightforward so let's quickly go over how to get that working and how to get your oculus quest 2 playing your steam vr games and being able to stream it for whichever platform you decide to stream on so virtual desktop uh, is not a free program. You do have to pay for it on the Oculus Store. It is not expensive, however, and I find it entirely worth the price being able to play my PC VR games as if I was natively playing with a plugged in headset to my computer, but being able to do that entirely wirelessly from my house has been really, really awesome. Um, it was what originally turned me off from getting a VR headset. Um, but the Oculus Quest 2 being able to do this so well wirelessly, like you wouldn't think that it could be this good at doing it because, you know, why hasn't everybody else been doing it? It is, it's incredible. It's amazing. I've been having a great time using it. Um, so it's very easy though. Now, like I mentioned, all you have to do is just go to the Oculus Quest store, um, pick up virtual desktop, install it on your Quest. Uh, once you do that, go onto your computer if you want while it's installing on the Quest, go over to your computer, um, go to the um, virtual desktop website. I'll leave a link in the description below for that. You're going to go ahead and download the uh, virtual desktop streamer app. And once you get that installed, we'll jump on over to the computer and I'll show you the settings that I'm using right there on my computer. So once you have the virtual desktop streamer installed on your computer, um, there's not really going to be many changes you're going to have to do. You're going to type in your Oculus username, um, and that's just going to allow it to connect to the application that's on your quest. Um, and then I personally turned off the virtual audio driver because I don't need it. I use voice beater, uh, on my computer and we'll be going over that in a future video on how I had to use voice meter to get my Oculus quest working with a dual PC stream setup. Um, on a singular PC, which we're gonna be showing you today, it's a lot easier, so you don't have to use voice meter, um, but that's the way that I ended up working. So having it auto select the microphone is a really helpful setting. What that allows you to do is it allows you to use the headset's uh, microphone as your main microphone in Windows, so that if you're using Discord or um, as well as OBS, you can use um, that microphone um, be able to talk to your stream and your friends and be able to use it in game as well if you're playing an online game all right so uh, once you have virtual desktop installed make sure that you have the virtual desktop streamer app running on your computer that you're going to be using for steam vr uh, and go ahead and open up virtual desktop 
and this is what your screen's gonna look like. Now, my headset is very close to the screen, so let's go ahead and fix that real quick. Okay, so this is, it's just gonna show you your computer. Now to bring up the virtual desktop settings, you're gonna press the menu button on your left controller and that'll bring up the virtual desktop window. And so we have a few options here. So we can go to the environment and you can actually change the environment around you. Um, so the environment is just the space around uh, whatever display you have. Um, you can do some really cool things, like you can make it look like you're in a cinema. Um, you can make it look like you're in an office. You can do a whole bunch of things. I usually just leave it on Purple Nebula, but you have a lot of options there um, if you'd like. The Games tab, this is where you're going to want to launch most of your games from. Um, it is. They recommend that you do it this way because it increases... Uh, the compatibility and it makes sure that the games are running properly with the quest 2 so if you end up running into any compatibility issues or something's not picking up your controllers uh, quit steam vr and then try to launch them through the virtual desktop games tab so on the input page i didn't change any of these settings i left them all as they are uh, things have been working great and um I've been really enjoying the way that uh, the controllers work in SteamVR. It's been flawless. So on the, on the settings page, I would recommend you leave as many things default as possible and then only change them when you feel like you need to improve something. Um, so I have the environmental quality to medium. I'm going to try playing around with high. And I do suggest with all of these settings, you try playing around with them and seeing what works for you. Um, the frame rate, we upped it to 90 frames per second. Once V28 comes out, we'll be able to up that to 128. But again, I do not have V28 yet, so I can't do that. Uh, the desktop bitrate, I maxed it out. Again, like I mentioned, I would suggest you keep it at the default and then only increase it if you want to try to increase your quality. I'm in the same room as my uh, router. so And I got a pretty good router, so I don't have to worry too much about the internet. Um, I'm not running a Wi-Fi 6 router, I'm only running an old um, AC router, but it works flawlessly and I haven't had any issues. The important setting over here is the microphone pass-through. Um, this is one, what you want to have. make sure that it is enabled so that you can use the microphone on the Quest 2 to talk to your stream, talk through your Discord, and talk in games. Uh, very important. I wouldn't suggest using noise cancellation though. It doesn't seem to work that great. Um, the microphone's not good enough for the noise cancellation to work properly, and it seems to cut out um, a lot of my talking, so I turned that off. I, well, I think by default it is off. Um, I tried turning it on, and then I turned it back off because it wasn't working great. And everything else is default. So if we go over here to the streaming page, again, we increase this to 90. For the VR graphics quality, um, I have a 1080 Ti, so I've been running it on high, um, and it's been working great for me. What I would suggest you do is, if your graphics card isn't particularly listed here, find out which one of these your graphics card is close, closely compared to, and choose that setting. And then if you run into issues, lower it. If you want to try, you can go to the higher setting and see if you're able to handle it, but make sure, like, the smoothness of your games are really important because it helps reduce motion sickness and stuff. So I would suggest you try to keep your games as smooth as possible, but I've been able to run high, no problem on most of my games. Uh, again, I maxed out the VR bitrate. It's been working wonderfully for me, but I would suggest leaving this on default and then only increasing it uh, when you need to. And that's mainly it for the settings. I didn't change any of these other ones here. Um, I just left them all at the, the default. So now if we go back over here, we're going to go ahead and launch um, OVR Toolkit. So I use uh, OVR Toolkit and that's what allows me to um, have my Twitch chat on my wrist. So we'll go ahead and launch that so I can show you. Uh, once we get into a game, you'll be able to see it on my wrist here. Um, it's going to say window cannot be found because I currently don't have my Twitch chat open on my computer. 
um, but I will leave a video up in the cards on how to get this set up best for your Twitch chat. Uh, you just use the pop out. It's very easy in the video that I've watched. It's very straightforward and easy to follow. So I'll leave that linked and in the description below as well. So now when you launch a game, um, sometimes you'll run into this issue right here where the game is not going full screen and the VR is gonna be on top. So make sure whenever you launch a game, um, just take a look at your gaming computer um, and make sure that this is not happening. Um, if you are, you should not be capturing display. Um, so it shouldn't be the biggest issue, but what I normally suggest you do is make sure that you click on the game. And then if the game's not in full screen, just press alt and enter and it'll full screen the game for you. Um, and then from here, we can go ahead and set up uh, OBS. Um, so setting up OBS, super easy. You would just add it to the game as you normally would add a game. So you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna go to game capture. Uh, we'll call this blade and we'll choose a specific window. It makes it a little bit easier on you. Um, right, so we have our game captured here. So now we wanna capture our microphone um, I like to do my microphones by actual inputs. So we're going to do that and we're going to grab virtual desktop microphone. So there we go. And we got our microphone coming in. So next we're going to want our uh, desktop audio. Again, I use voice meter. So we're just going to call this one desktop and it's going to be voice meter input. So there we go. We got the game playing here. We got the microphone and Everything is working. The stream will be able to hear me. Um, they'll be able to see the game. They'll be able to hear the game. And then if you want, you can put your webcam on there just as you normally would. Now, really quickly, if you want Discord to also work, you're gonna wanna make sure that you change your input device um, to be the microphone, or if you're using voice meter, whatever voice meter input you choose. Um, I'm going to go into this whole voice meter thing a little bit more in the video where I'm going to talk about how I do my two PC stream setup because that's where voice meter became really important for the VR especially. Um, but you can just choose the microphone uh, virtual desktop audio and it'll grab the microphone from the headset. Your friends will be able to hear you and you should be able to hear them. Make sure you leave the um, output device to default. Um, I don't typically do this. I usually have it on a very specific audio output, but I don't normally use Discord on my gaming computer to talk. I usually use that on the streaming PC so that on stream I can kind of separate it as its own source. Whole different thing. Um, but with default, it seemed to work the most consistently. When I had it going to a specific device, sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't. So I would suggest leaving output device the default so that it does make sure it goes to the headset. And that should be it. So as I mentioned, the recent update uh, where you don't have to sideload virtual desktop or do developer mode or any of that stuff makes it super easy to set this up. You just install the streamer mode on your computer. You install the app on your Oculus. You get them connected together and you're ready to play PC VR games directly on your Oculus, entirely wireless, no wires, no nothing. It's incredible. You can stream your microphone right from the Oculus Quest, which isn't the greatest microphone but it does the job and it makes it so that when you're facing away from the computer your stream can still hear you um, because having the microphone on your desk and you're facing away from it is really not going to pick you up very well so i found that that works the best for me and i've had a really good time streaming the past couple days next week we'll go over how to stream oculus um, games that are not on the pc um, that's also very straightforward and then after that, I will show you guys how to do the two PC setup, um, which I was unable to find any kind of guides on. I kind of had to troubleshoot for a couple days and um, I didn't want to make this video too long by doing all three things at once. So I'm just going to split them up. And so next week we're going to do the casting with the Oculus VR. And then the week after we will do two PC setup. And then maybe the week after that we'll have AirLink from Oculus and I can show how to set that up as well. If you found anything in this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you liked and subscribed. Uh, leave any feedback, comments, or suggestions in the comment section below. All these things really help me out uh, into the YouTube algorithm that is in its mysterious ways. Um, I do really appreciate everybody who watches my videos and engages with them. 
Uh, I do try to answer any comments as quickly as possible in my videos. So hopefully um, I can get to them as quickly as I can. As always, I stream on Twitch from Friday until Tuesday. Come check me out and say hello. Um, you can ask questions there. And if I'm in VR, I do take a little bit longer because I'm still getting used to looking at the wrist um, when play, playing PC VR games um, to look at the chat. Uh, but I do try to get to it as quick as, I, quick as possible. And when I'm not in VR, um, the chat's not usually too busy, so I can usually get to your questions and comments pretty quickly. Thanks again for watching the end of the video. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you next Friday.